Hi, I'm Zoe Bayers and I'm the leader of the BBC Philharmonic Orchestra in Britain. Um, I'd like to talk to you about the challenges that face us as orchestral musicians and the choices that um, many young players of orchestral instruments are going to be faced with in um, coming years and also from that, how best to make decisions about um, one's career um, based on what's available. Um, and I realise different people in different countries are going to be watching this and it, different rules apply. Um, but I'm hoping that what I'm really essentially going to talk about is um, universally applicable. Um, so we are uh, facing very, very scary times. Um, as orchestral musicians. Uh, certainly in Europe um, these are unprecedented but I think in Africa um, or orchestral musicians have, have long seen the need to be, um, to think creatively, to be uh, very uh, diverse in their skill set. Um, so I think a lot of what I say will sound very um, familiar to a lot of you. But um, I'm going to say it anyway because I think it is, it has renewed importance in um, today's um, climate. Um, and also I think that really understanding what your skill set is um, has become a new skill in itself. Um, I know when I left school, I very quickly left behind any um, other skills I might have acquired. So maths went out the window. Um, I just about held on to some basic skills at, you know, writing. So for program notes, things like that, I held on to those um, throughout music college because I needed to write essays and dissertations. And, and so I, I, kept, I kept on with those. Um, I wish I had had the foresight to uh, acquire um, better IT skills, um, computing and any kind of programming that you can use to um, put your content and your work on the internet now I'd say is probably your biggest um, ally in building your career because obviously our concert platforms are closed, um, our concert venues are, uh, you know, unable to accommodate numbers in any way um, that reflect um, a normal audience size and, and certainly in different parts of the world, different lockdowns and different rules apply. So online is not ideal for what we really want to do in terms of being performing musicians and communicating with our audiences. But I think for now, certainly it's your most powerful Tool. And I don't think anymore that means necessarily having a website or anything as um, traditional as that. I think having um, a very good working knowledge of all of the social media sites, YouTube, um, TikTok, all of the media platforms, um, and you can reach your audiences on, um, that is, I think, of paramount importance. Um, so the content that you put out needs to be um, really curated for your audiences. Now, I'm sure you know your audiences, but it really is worth sitting down and actually making a list of what you think people want to hear. And then if you can sample an audience, um, really ask them the same questions and see how your answers match up. Um, I think that's a really, really important thing because what we as musicians, especially in the classical world, think people want to see and hear online and what they actually have the stamina to watch and listen to um, and have the desire to watch and listen to are quite often two different things. Um, and I've been really very surprised um, over the last few months what has really um, got very good feedback um, and what people are asking for more of, which is, you know, some repertoire I would not have expected, some formats I would not have expected, um, and what um, we're actually putting out.
um, which is not always meeting their needs and the needs change. So to try to sample your audience at various stages of however these lockdowns progress and, and this, this pandemic um, unfolds over the next year or so, try to keep sampling your audience at various intervals. Keep in touch with them. Feedback is your most powerful friend um, for digital and online. And I don't just mean a thumbs up um, or a, a like. I think getting an actual answer to a question um, whether that's a survey, monkey survey, or, or anything um, similar, that's your most powerful um, kind of uh, tool to to use to to shape and mould um, your content to fit your audience's needs. Um, charge for it um, for your content. I think that's really important that people don't f continue to flood the internet and social media platforms with free content. Um, by all means, have a window of free access and then um, start charging for it. But even as a student, um, if you're a student watching this, your time is still valuable. Your time is still money. Um, that is the bottom line. So it's really important to put a value on your time and your effort and your creativity and your energy. Um, now, whether that's donation or a fixed fee, up to you, but I think it's really important. People then also really feel um, validated that they are giving back to the arts and that they are helping um, keep the arts going, the performing arts going in this difficult time. If everything's just constantly free, um, I think we risk um, skewing the balance terribly. So don't be afraid to charge for your time. Um, that being said, I think if you can sort of offer a taster um, of what you do as a little um, trailer, a little snippet, something like that, and put that out free, I think that that's a good idea. Just kind of like a little teaser trailer thing. Um, that works well. So while you're busy building your um, online content or your um, online teaching, which I'd say is, uh, you know, probably the most important thing we can continue to do at this time is continue with our music education. Um, if you teach, brilliant. Um, if you can teach online, even better. If you don't teach, consider definitely getting into teaching, whether it's five minute little taster lessons for free for people, just so that you get the experience of teaching. Um, or however you want to go into it, I think it's really very, very important um, to keep the flame alive, as it were, of the arts, teaching and, and communicating your passion. So it needn't be teaching your instrument. It could be talking about your favorite composer. It could be talking about um, your favorite recording. It could be talking about why you love somebody's interpretation more than somebody else's. Um, so it could be sort of, you know, very much, uh, very much tailored to what you're interested in, and and as long as you're sharing it in um, an interesting and dynamic way, I think that that um, it keeps your involvement visible and keeps you um, reaching people, your audience or your students or whoever you're aiming to reach um, in in a variety of ways and a variety of interesting ways that don't just require you to you know play or sing. Um, so there's this online building of online content going on on one side, and it needn't be a full time thing. It sounds like a lot, but it could be um, little, and uh, if you kind of promote it in the right way, it looks like a lot. Um, little and not even often, reasonably often, um, keeps people going for a long time because obviously your audience has a, a, a wider net now than they ever had um, in terms of um, digital content, online content. So while you're doing this, um, if you are still keen on uh, a playing career um, in an orchestra or um, a large ensemble, I would say the most um, powerful 
where you can um, arm yourself for the future is by um, finding ways of playing that involve maybe playing outdoors, that involve um, colleagues, not too many, obviously needs to be socially distanced and done correctly within the um, regulations and the restrictions of wherever you are in the world. Um, but definitely trying to make small things happen first. Now, here in the UK, recruitment in, in orchestras is pretty much on pause um, until well into next year. So I'm assuming um, that is probably a worldwide thing, although people are doing um, uh, uh, virtual auditions and um, a lot of orchestras are happy um, for people to send video auditions in. Um, that's not universal. Um, although I, I, I really celebrate that and applaud that. I think it's great that people um, are acknowledging video um, as a completely valid way of auditioning for orchestras. Um, orchestras now here, I can only speak from my personal experience, are um, very reduced in what, what we can do in terms of repertoire, in terms of numbers. Um, so it's a very different um, future, uh, maybe uh, not a long-term future. We hope we could get back to uh, something resembling um, normal some point next year. But for now, things are limited to sort of large ensemble slash small chamber orchestra size. Now, I realise there are different numbers of opportunities in different parts of the world for um, putting stuff like this on. But do your um, research because there is a lot of arranging going on. Um, so taking big, huge orchestra pieces um, and, and turning them into smaller ensemble pieces just to keep things going. And if you can, um, all the better, if you can do your own arrangements amazing. If you can get hold of some of these arrangements and find outdoor spaces or um, if the weather isn't reliable as it isn't here um, and then you can maybe the best you can hope for is um, a friendly venue that might let in some people. But I think we need to recalibrate our idea of this numbers in audience. We've, we've always been sort of trained to to hope that concerts sell out and that we have you know loads of people to play to well that's just not going to happen for a long time um, so again it's this thing of targeting your audience and really um, inviting people in a different way making them feel really really special and really um, singled out for a special event to come to um, now whether this is in the flesh um, in a real concert or whether this is online, I think, again, it's that making people feel um, personally invited and personally um, involved, I think, is a really good way to re-engage with our audiences. Um, I, I have to say, um, I think of the, this repertoire and size um, uh, reductions as a, as a real challenge and, and something that I'm relishing and I'm, I'm really enjoying um, playing slightly less mainstream repertoire, maybe slightly um, different composers. Um, and I know that a lot of people who also, um, for example, may um, do some improvising or have uh, folk music as part of their, or jazz as part of their um, skill set. Um, concerts that combine all of these um, different Kind of genres and and different um, ways of making music into one so sort of mixed uh, repertoire mixed genre concerts are very very successful at the moment and and certainly a lot of people um, really enjoying listening to them enjoying being taken on a slightly different journey um, from a traditional concert hall experience because we can't replicate that it's just not possible um, the other thing i would say if you are on the path of wanting to um, become an orchestral musician or um, an ensemble musician, um, there are some low latency um, ways of making music that are coming into the public domain that are 
hopefully not going to be so expensive. So hopefully we will soon be able to play nearly exactly together over um, the internet. Uh, obviously this depends on your your signal strength and your um, various various things. Your actual physical proximity probably does still have a tiny bit of an impact on that. So somebody playing in the UK, playing a duet with somebody in South Africa might experience a slight lag still. Um, but it's really worth um, keeping an eye on things that are coming out. There's Lola, which Edinburgh University has developed, which is very, very good. Um, and these things are coming into the public domain. Um, I, I'm hoping that um, all the big uh, universities and institutions will invest in these because it really will help people to play together, even in the deepest of lockdowns. That's so important for us to be able to play um, with other human beings making music, which is what we've all wanted to do. At that point, when low latency um, hopefully becomes a bit more of a um, an accessible thing, um, playing to teachers um, all over the world has suddenly become um, something one can do from one's home. So I would take advantage of that as much as possible to play to people um, wherever in wherever you are. Um, choose your professors, choose your teacher, write to them approach them you can only get a no sorry i'm too busy or which is unlikely in, the, in today's climate most people have a bit more time and are really willing to share um in a, in a way that maybe wasn't possible before so now you don't have to get on a plane to have a lesson with somebody in london um i think it's great and we can really make use of that with with as technology becomes more geared towards getting good sound and low latency. I think we can really um, explore that um, with great and very positive results, which of course doesn't still doesn't um, solve the problem of somebody desperately wanting to build a career as a performing musician, whether it's you know orchestral solo, chamber ensemble. Um, I think it's increasingly important that we think of ourselves as as it's a dreadfully overused term, but as portfolio musicians. Um, and this means, by all means, set your sights on one particular goal, one particular way of working that, that you feel suits you very well. By all means, do that. Dream big. It's, it's essential to do that. Um, and don't lose hope because these things are possible. But broadening your skill set and being as good a teacher as you can be, being as good a chamber musician as you can be, being as good a composer as you can be, whatever your skills are, um, now is the time to really hone them. And I think there's never been such uh, an opportunity for multi-talented musicians. This is your time. Um, all of the traditional music that inspires you, you know, research it, absorb it, play it, put it out there. Um, there there's a thirst for uh, authenticity, for, for understanding what makes you, you as a musician. Um, again, talking to your audience about your heritage, about your culture, understanding, um, helping them understand your music and why you play as you do, why you make music in the way you do. I think that's a really, really powerful tool. So what I think we need to be, not just, you know, musicians, we need to be real communicators um, in so many different ways, and as many different ways as we can be to reach our audience, to make it real for them, because I think that is the, the single biggest downfall of online content is that it's it's not actually, it doesn't feel real. It doesn't, it doesn't make people have that visceral response that you get from hearing music live. So we have to work in other ways to, um, to bring that to audiences. So engage with your audiences deeply, as deeply as you can. Um, engage with yourself as a musician, who you are, what makes you tick. Um, and really see how you can bring that to life um, as much as possible. And don't lose hope. It will all come back. 
Thank you.